The psalmist said in Psalms 34, 3, O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Why is magnifying the Lord so important? And what are the benefits of doing this? This is what we're going to be looking at in this episode. My name is Bob Andrade, and this is a Position of Power podcast made just for you. Psalm 34, 3 says, O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Notice with me the emphasis of doing this. Together. And also notice that it doesn't say, O oh, magnify the problem with me. There's a story in the Bible that illustrates this truth of what happens when we magnify the Lord. This story is found in the book of Numbers chapter 13. After leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, Moses is now leading them out of the desert on their way to the promised land of Canaan, which is now known as Israel. Here we're going to see Moses sending one representative from each tribe of Israel to go and spy out the land. Let's pick up the story in verse 25 of chapter 13. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel and Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report among the land, among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought too. Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night long. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It's a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all of the Israelites at the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me, even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them? 
In this story, we see 12 spies going into the promised land. Ten of those spies magnified the problem. Two of those spies magnified the Lord. And when those two came back, their report was, we can do this. Let's go up at once. One of the reasons we get together with other believers is to be in an environment where we magnify or make larger God in our beliefs and emotions. We can't make God any bigger, but we can see him as bigger. And when he gets bigger, our problems get smaller. When we magnify the problem, God gets smaller and the problem gets bigger. When we magnify the Lord, not only do we see him as bigger, but we see ourselves as bigger too. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. May this truth cause you to rethink your approach to everyday circumstances. I know it has for me. Until next time, be victorious. Why not?